this video, I traveled to Miami and spent a long weekend looking for bonefish on the fly. But on this trip, I'll be doing a DIY style, where DIY stands for do it yourself. Essentially, it means fishing without the assistance of a professional guide. DIY fishing is commonly associated with destination trips where anglers explore new and often remote locations to fish. DIY fishing is very cool, but it also demands that anglers be well prepared and knowledgeable about the target species and their habitats. The success of the trip will depend strictly on you. Day one, the weather was perfect. It was a beautiful sunny day with calm winds. And as soon as I arrived, I noticed something chasing small minnows within casting range. After my first cast, I was hooked. I quickly landed a ladyfish. Not exactly what I was looking for, but it was a relief to shake off the skunk, and I felt better about my chances of finding bonefish. A few minutes later, waiting along the shoreline, at about 50 feet in front of me, I saw what I thought were moving fish. I placed my fly just ahead of them, and after a couple of strips, I was on. Look what we got. This is amazing. How lucky are we, huh? On day two, the wind picked up a lot. Spotting fish became difficult and it took quite a while before I finally had my first shot at a bonefish. It's a beautiful bonefish. Wow, wow, wow. Let's go get this guy. Losing the only bonefish of the morning was a huge disappointment, but you try not to dwell too much and get ready for your next shot. Unfortunately, my last fish of the day would be this little guy. Conditions have changed a lot. Uh, the wind picked up. It's, uh, it's getting harder to cast. I definitely can't see the fish now. The water's really, really uh, rippled. So I'm gonna start making a way back and look for signs. But it was a great morning. Um, I dropped the fish. Actually, I dropped two fish. I thought I was gonna land this other one. I was close to landing, but it didn't work out. Anyways, uh, we're gonna start working our way back, and it was just, um, it was just a fantastic morning. Uh, so. Uh, on my last day, fishing conditions were terrible. It was windy with overcast skies. So I had to adjust my fishing style because when sight fishing becomes nearly impossible, there are still other signs to look for that can increase the odds of landing bonefish. Stay tuned until the end of this video for details on how to spot fish in these conditions. All right, let's go try and catch a bonefish using this fly. Let's see how we go. We got a fish on the floor here, and if I had to guess, 
I'm gonna say I have a nice bonefish. Nice. Got a beautiful bonefish here. Oh, it just came off. Damn it, all right. Look how beautiful that is. We're gonna release him in a second. She's ready to go. All right, guy. That's it, we're gonna wrap it up. The tide's uh, almost done and uh, we have to move on. So um, we'll see you soon. If you get a chance to visit Florida, South Florida, give it a shot. Go waiting, look for signs of fish. Um, the bite was just fantastic, phenomenal. And uh, we really had a good time. As far as equipment, we used a, an eight weight fly rod. This is a nine foot eight weight fly rod with a uh, uh, reel with really good drag and uh, floating line. And I used to different different type of flies that used uh, shrimp looking like flies and uh, this morning probably because it was overcast they um, they seem to really like hitting this crab like fly it was um, pretty effective and um, your leader should be anywhere between 15 and 20 pounds uh, and uh, when I first got here it was kind of cloudy it was kind of hard to see the fish but what I was looking for was movement on top uh, disturbance bait patterns um, mud in the water uh, and uh, I did find that a couple times I made a cast in the area where I saw that lemon fly sink started to retrieve slowly and the fish hit so even though I couldn't see the fish um, I could see signs of them around and that's really what helped a lot all right see you soon